Hello guys! In today's video, we're taking a deep dive into a topic that has been creating a lot of discussion within the EV community. NEO's CEO and his firm stance against the rising dominance of Extended Range Electric Vehicles EREVS. Alongside that, we're also going to explore something equally interesting how NEO is currently strengthening its recruitment pipeline by tapping directly into top university talent through the NEO University Cup. There is a lot of movement happening on both the technological and human capital fronts, and these shifts reveal a great deal about where the EV market is heading and how companies are preparing for the future. So let's break everything down in detail. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research. To start, let's talk about NEO's approach to acquiring engineering talent. Many people may not be aware of this, but NEO hosts a large event called the NEO University Cup. This is a nationwide competition where the strongest engineering teams from universities across China and even some international universities come together to build their own electric race cars from scratch. The teams then compete in EV racing events, with lap times determining the winners. These students put together impressively capable vehicles, and the competition is more intense than many would expect. Winners walk away with recognition, trophies, and significant grant funding. In addition to EV racing, the event also includes an autonomous driving competition. Some teams design full AD systems capable of navigating complex courses without human input. All of this happens under the framework of NEO's sponsorship, with additional support from other partners. What makes this even more noteworthy is how NEO uses the event as a direct talent pipeline. The CEO himself attends the competition, personally speaks with top students, and in some cases even offers positions to outstanding competitors on the spot. This hands-on approach demonstrates how seriously NEO treats technical talent and how much emphasis they put on building a strong engineering foundation for the future. Now let's transition to the main topic, the industry-wide debate around ERevs. Over the past few years, extended-range hybrids have taken over the Chinese market. This trend began with Li Auto, whose big battery hybrid models quickly gained popularity. Soon after, brands like Leap Motor and BYD followed with their own versions. BYD's hybrids in particular became top sellers. More recently, AITO joined the wave with strong sales of their range extended models. And perhaps the most surprising shift came from Xpeng, a company once viewed as the Chinese Tesla. Despite their EV-focused identity, they released their first hybrid, the Xpeng X9 Super Hybrid marking a surprising shift in strategy. What's happening here is a clear split in technological direction. Some brands are sticking to pure EVS, while others are embracing large battery hybrids that behave almost like EVS but carry gasoline generators for backup. NEO sits firmly in the pure EV camp, especially with its heavy investment in battery swapping. Meanwhile, competitors are trying to cover every possibility EVS, hybrids, flying vehicles, robotics essentially casting a wide technological net. NEO CEO recently responded to this trend in detail, outlining his concerns with ERevs and why he believes pure EVS are the better long-term solution. He mentioned two major drawbacks of extended-range hybrid systems. First, despite having gasoline components, these vehicles are used as pure EVS most of the time. With improving battery sizes and charging habits, EREV owners are now driving on electric mode around 90 to 95% of the time. This means drivers are essentially using them like standard EVS while still carrying all the extra components that come with a hybrid system. This leads to the second major issue, space. Because EREVs need to house a generator, a fuel tank, cooling systems, and related hardware, they lose a substantial amount of space, especially in the front. Many EREV models don't have a front trunk frunk at all. In contrast, NEO's pure EV models like the Envo L90 and the ES8 come with spacious frunks that owners actually use quite frequently. According to NEO's internal data, frunk usage among these models averages about twice per week per owner making it as valuable as the rear storage space. 
When you switch to an EREV, that space is gone. Interior layout is also affected. Because hybrids must fit both electric and gasoline systems, they inevitably sacrifice cabin space and storage flexibility. Their batteries cannot be as large as those in pure EVS, which means their true EV range is still lower than a full EV equivalent. Performance and efficiency are also impacted due to the added weight of the generator and fuel tank, and while the difference may not be extreme during everyday use, it is certainly noticeable in certain driving situations. However, one of the most important long-term disadvantages is maintenance. A pure EV requires much less maintenance because it lacks the complex mechanical systems found in gasoline cars. EREVS reintroduce many of those maintenance needs pressure systems for the fuel tank, servicing for the generator, and additional mechanical components that can fail over time. This adds cost and complexity throughout ownership. Meanwhile, NEO's battery swap model eliminates concerns about battery aging and allows owners to upgrade or exchange packs easily. During his discussion, NEO's CEO also explained that these product decisions require a long planning cycle. Developing a new vehicle typically takes two to three years, which means companies have to make decisions today about what the market will want several years from now. Many automakers believe the future favors larger battery hybrids, so that's the direction they're betting on. Xpeng's CEO even mentioned to NEO's team that he expects hydrogen electric hybrid systems to become the ultimate hybrid solution in the future. Overall, the EV landscape is undergoing a major split. Consumers can now choose between pure EVS with battery swapping, pure EVS relying solely on fast charging, large battery EREVS, and traditional hybrids. Each option has its own advantages and appeals to different lifestyles and regions. For example, in places where charging networks are incomplete or unreliable, having a gasoline backup in an EREV provides peace of mind. This perspective is particularly valid in parts of the world where EV infrastructure has not yet matured. But in China, where NEO has built an expansive and rapidly growing battery swap network. The benefits of pure EVS become far more compelling. With battery swapping, owners enjoy extremely fast energy replenishment, abundant interior space, and freedom from long-term battery degradation worries. For this environment, the pure EV model makes perfect sense. That said, NEO is well aware that this logic does not apply universally. In regions like the Middle East or North Africa, such as Egypt where EV infrastructure is still developing, NEO plans to produce hybrid models specifically tailored for those markets. Even though NEO is confident in its strategy, extended range vehicles are not going anywhere anytime soon. Li Auto, for example, is preparing major refreshes for its L9, L8, and L7 models. Their recent sales decline may simply be due to customers waiting for the updated versions, similar to how NEO's ES6 sales slowed because the next-generation NT 3.0 variant is expected soon. Once Li Auto launches its new generation, their sales could rebound quickly. All of this makes it clear that we're entering an era where multiple powertrain technologies will coexist and each brand will pursue the path that aligns best with its strategy and market focus. Pure EVS will attract users who want maximum convenience and minimal maintenance. Hybrids will appeal to those who need flexibility in regions with weak infrastructure. And every brand will try to differentiate itself through its chosen approach. In conclusion, NEO's CEO believes strongly that pure EVS combined with battery swapping represent the ideal long-term solution at least in environments where infrastructure is strong. These vehicles offer the best balance of space, convenience, performance, and long-term cost. But for places where charging stations are rare or unreliable, EREVS remain a practical and sometimes necessary choice. The future is unlikely to be defined by a single technology. Instead, consumers will have a wide range of options, each suited to different needs and environments. So now the question turns to you, what's available where you live? If you don't have access to battery swap stations, would you still prefer a pure EV? 
Or would a large battery hybrid be the more sensible choice? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stock predictions and market insights. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy investing, and see you in the next video.